Um, let's see here. So when you first get to the park, you get to pick which class you want to go in. Um, do you think that it matters what stats each each character has? Because you know, I mean, you know this, but just for the listener, each each character has specific stats. There's, I mean, I don't know all of them. What what are the stats specifically? There's strength, oh, intelligence, geez. wisdom, charisma, constitution, constitution, charisma, and dexterity. Yeah, I think that's probably it. So there's specific details that kind of flesh out your character a little bit more. You know, are they are they really like cunning? Are they very you know wise? That kind of thing. Like what it kind of helps determine what choice they would make in certain situations based on what they're really good at. So do you think that is something that we care about at this park? Like when you first get to the park, do you do like a personality assessment and they tell you like, here are your stats or is that even relevant? Does it just matter what class you are? I don't know. I don't think, well, technically like on pen and paper, it's relevant, right? Mm -hmm. That's what all your tax off. Yeah. But I think like adding numbers and stats to it would break the, uh, just, just break that, the illusion that you're yeah. you're in that world. That's totally true. It, it would be much more immersive than playing Dungeons and Dragons, which is clearly a game. But if it's your physical body, you know, then is this a game or is this real? Like you can kind of start to blur the lines a little bit more. I like that. Let's leave the numbers out of it. Cool. I mean, like as you play, like someone who's gonna like pick a a a, a, war, a fighter, mm-hmm. and they have a sword. Maybe as they go through. As they keep on coming back, they're going to get more strength-based mm-hmm. abilities because yeah. that's just that's what the the stats based off of. Cool, that's awesome. Um, another well, I was just thinking for the different classes. If we have there's a certain requirements. Well, that's kind of weird too. What if you go? What if you just go by yourself? Then you just pick whatever, whatever class you want, and then yeah, you can you want, only yeah. access. I just feel like that might be restrictive for some people. If like, you know, there's a a certain challenge that requires a thief, then it's like, oh, well, uh, I can't do that one. <laughs> I'll have to be a thief <laughs> next time. It well, be... I always play a bard, and bards are very, like, <laughs> talking to everybody. So yeah. it's like, if you're by yourself, just be a bard. Yeah, there you go. Because you, then you're forced to, like, just hang out with everyone that right. you don't. And it, it might be kind of cool if there are certain challenges that require, you know, four, four people to pass or whatever. Like, there's no way you can defeat this monster unless you have a group of four. So they just kind of pair you up. Like, um... So there's this big monster. We need a group of four people. Um, I only, it's just me. Like, can anyone come with me? It'd be kind of cool. And it'd be more immersive. Like if you're in this actual fantasy world where there's monsters around every corner and like, you know, all these like scary things going on, you're going to have to like be social and ask for help once in a while. It might be kind of a cool experience that people don't usually do at a theme park. You're not usually like, uh, help. I need to go on this roller coaster. Can I have uh, a couple more people to come with me? (laughs) doesn't really happen at more normal theme parks but it'd be appropriate here yeah Mm -hmm. i also feel like the different areas should represent different campaign settings because like some of the core campaign settings are so iconic Mm -hmm. that like if you had like a one that was dedicated to dark sun it's all like a desert wasteland like eberron which is like kind of like a more modern take on dungeons and dragons with like trains and stuff Mm mm-hmm I think that would be really nice, especially for like the huge D and D nerds. They'd be like, "Oh man, I'm gonna go to Shard, this t- this city of towers." Yeah, that's an awesome idea. And there are so many novels set in each of these different like places where it would be. There's diehard fans of each, you know, each different era of Dungeons and Dragons. So it'd be cool to represent them all as best as possible. And um, maybe there is, you know, there are maps of this whole place, and like you have to. There's only, you know, you have a specific map of just one particular area, and that's available within that area. Um, so you can see what else there is to do in that space. And then when you're ready to move on to the next portion of the park, you have to try to find a new map of the new area because you don't know where anything is there either. You have to barter with, like, the shopkeep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a really cool idea. And I love the idea of having uh, park employees who inhabit a role as well and, like, stay in character and, uh, you know, just get to, to represent a certain character within the story. That'd be really cool. Yeah. That's the, that's the cool new thing, right? Like universal did it with Harry Potter and, Mm -hmm. and Disney's doing it with their new star Wars land. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. It'd be awesome. (laughs) It sounds really cool. (laughs) The thing that I I feel like they're going to run up against is like, you can't really be rude to like your customers, but then in the Star Wars universe, like as soon as you go into the cantina, like everyone wants you to either leave or like 
they want to fight you. <laughs> and like, I feel like you can't really do that to people who are paying to be there. Unless you know what you're getting into. If yeah. you go to the shady part of town and you find like a tavern, maybe they're going to stare at you. Like... Right. True. And maybe this is like an 18 plus park or something, or you have to be like 14 years old. Cause I feel like a lot of this would be pretty traumatic for <laughs> little kids. Oh man, there should definitely be like a kid. I know that sounds traumatic for kids, but there uh-huh. should be like a kid's area with like a baby unicorn, <laughs> like all these like <laughs> fake animatronic animals. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, there totally could be a a kid's area, like a less intense area. And then maybe, maybe half the park is for the diehard, like, you know, big fans of Dungeons and Dragons who aren't, are ready to like get a little bit scared and maybe have to do some physical challenges and that kind of thing. Because at least in the Dungeons and Dragons campaigns I've played, it seems like there's always a lot of um, tests of strength, like yeah. having to climb up a rope or like uh, drag someone's, you know, someone's unconscious body out of some out of some dangerous thing. It'd be kind of interesting to try to check, like, challenge the the players, the the guests in those kinds of ways as well. Where it's like um, this thing's chasing you. You know, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to escape this? can you climb up this tree or like i would i don't even play characters like that i uh-huh. would not i would just sit there and be like no someone else should do it <laughs> yeah somebody should save me seriously i and, will support you from the ground <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be cool if they're just animatronics like um you know a thing will kind of chase you but you could just attack it like shoot it with some arrows or throw a, a spell at it launch a magic missile or whatever you can defeat it just by directly attacking it or you can just run or you can hide it'd be kind of cool there's I don't know of any theme parks that are like that, where it's you're in a small group and it's like you're the only ones that matter at that specific point. Like the world is interacting with just your small group. So maybe there's like a. You know, there's, like, the family-friendly portion of the park. And then for the hardcore one, maybe there's, like, kind of a waiting area. Like, um, maybe it's, like, a a sparring arena or something like that. So you're just kind of, like, hanging out. And there's, like, a gladiator kind of thing. So you can either go down there and, like, fight. You can, like, basically LARP, do some of that combat that you love so much with your foam weapons and stuff, just, like, (laughs) training. Or you can watch those people fight. And then they'll come and, like, tap you on the shoulder and say, like, uh, I've got a quest for you or whatever. You know, they'll come up with some kind of system where maybe they post something on a bulletin board that says like, um, you know, we're trying to find this guy. We've got like a, a wanted poster goes up and then maybe you and your group of friends are like, hey, let's take that wanted poster down. And then that's your admission into the actual park. And it's like, okay, we're ready for another group to come through. 